Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. I am the Crypto Crow, and this is not going to be a long video, but it should be an educational one, an informative one, if you will. Uh, I've been doing a lot of different uh, structuring of things and just trying to make sense of what's going on with GBTC and what I think might be happening with Bitcoin. And I don't typically do a lot of Bitcoin videos, but um, I was watching uh, a gentleman that I mentioned in the recent video, Crypto Jeb. Uh, and, uh, and, and, you know, I, I started thinking a lot about what he was saying and what he was showing on his charts. And I went back in history and I started looking things up. And then I wanted to project it out and try to figure out exactly what that means for what's happening right now. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to show you because there are some nuances to this that, um, you know, he didn't seem to talk that much about. And I figure I would just kind of expand on this a little bit to give it a little bit more of an extra oomph for its narrative. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right to it. Um, first thing I'm going to show you is this. This is what's so scary. Uh GBTC, of which I've already advised my advisor to dump and go into something with less fees. Um, but the trust currently owns, well, not anymore, uh, but before they started dumping, they had a 619,187 Bitcoin. Okay, 619,000 Bitcoin. And you'll see this article uh, that came out on January 16th, which is, you know, several days ago, another week ago. And it basically talks about how they're dumping. Grayscale moves another 9,000 Bitcoin to exchange in preparation for sale. So what's happening is, in case you've not been following anybody on YouTube in a while, the GPTC or the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust was basically the first paper traded fund of any kind related to Bitcoin. OK, um, but, you know, they did charge, you know, they, well, they still do apparently charge higher fees and things like that. They were kind of first to market with an investment vehicle for Bitcoin investors. And so because of that, they got a lot of volume and they got a lot of adopters. Uh, but the problem is, is that now that all of these spot Bitcoin ETFs um, so, well, before I get into that, basically what happened is that originally it was a one to one. It was kind of a one to one kind of deal. And then the stock itself split. And I think for every one Bitcoin, um, I, I don't even remember what the numbers were. I know I have hundreds of shares of this and each share now is worth basically a very, very fraction of a Bitcoin. OK, and so what's happened is, is since, since these spot Bitcoin ETFs have been approved, um, well, there are ba basically better spot vehicles in play with much lower fees, which is causing people to sell their grayscale shares, which is ultimately causing grayscale to dump these Bitcoin on the market. 2000 Bitcoin last week, a number that for now has risen to 11,000 and taken GBTC's holdings to below 610,000 Bitcoin. And ultimately, it seems week to week as people are basically leaving the GBTC fund or, or whatever it's called, whatever you want to call this thing, um, including myself, uh, I'm, I'm, I told my advisor to get out. So we're saying we're seeing basically what amounts to a high percentage of the Bitcoin, the total Bitcoin uh, held by GBTC and they're dumping on the market. And that's one of the reasons why we're seeing the current price action of Bitcoin play out, because there is a lot of selling pressure. So we're going to go to trading view and I'm going to show you this. This, ladies and gentlemen, you'll see this red line here. Well, this was the halving in May of 2020, okay? Leading up to the halving, we had 59 days, okay? 59 days leading into the halving, which was the conclusion of da, 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 a 63.34% drop in Bitcoin's price. OK, so we were basically sitting up here at 10,615 and we dropped all the way down to under 4,000. Now, this was on Friday, the 13th. Ooh, spooky day. Friday, the 13th of March 20th or March 2020. And that was just before the having leading into the next bull cycle. Now, you can see after this big drop concluded, it was basically up only from there. OK. 
And this has, is, and, and you'll notice too, I did a video recently um, that was talking about trade travel chills up only indicator for the month. And we just missed it. Like we didn't really close the way she said, you know, if it closes above and it clears it and it's all, and it wasn't quite like that. And she said, well, you know, maybe that's okay. But I don't think it is because there are nuances to this market. Now, if we look at the current price action, this is what it would look like. If what happened there happened again, this is 60 days from the halving, okay? 60 days from our upcoming halving, it's going to be, well, I think I've put it down here at, uh, as, as Saturday 20th of April 2024. So 60 days to the halving, if, if just a 40% drop were to take place, that would put us at around $31,104. That is a 31 or a 40% drop from this mark. Now, we were at this high of 49000 and we came all the way down here, which is what? It was the CME futures gap, which has been filled. So the CME futures gap has been filled, and now we're trending sideways a little bit. Well, it's funny because that's also exactly what happened in the previous drop in 2020. We trended sideways for a little bit until we just plummeted all the way down. Now, you'll notice the previous drop that I showed you was a 63% drop. This is just a 40% drop. This is a 60% drop. A 60% drop right now would put us at $25,000 in Bitcoin. You want to talk about an opportunity to buy in pre-having? Well, there you might just have it. What does that mean for everything else in the market? Of course, it means significant drops. Typically, Cardano drops approximately 20% lower than Bitcoin's local low um, before it starts moving up. That's pretty standard across the board from what I've seen over the years. And that's ultimately what I'm thinking we may very well be looking at. I'm not saying that this is going to play out exactly. I'm trying to give it a little bit of a... Of a <laughs> a little bit of hope and basically say that maybe we only dropped down to 31,000. Uh, and, and, you know, everything looks like this could very well be the case. Now the, what I don't know and what I haven't calculated yet is I don't know what the overall outflows on a weekly basis or a daily basis. I don't know what the overall outflows are currently. I'm sure there's some statistics out there. If you guys can find them, throw them in the comments for me. If you don't mind, it would really help me uh, because I would like to try and calculate the current consistent outflow of GBTC, what that means to their Bitcoin selling and over what time frame because I'd like to get a grasp on what it means to them dumping the Bitcoin down on the market and when it may conclude. I don't know if it ever will. I don't know. This could be an ongoing thing for quite some time, but I'm going to guess that there are going to be some people that aren't going to transition out of GPTC into another fund. They may just keep it where it is. Maybe GPTC um, lowers their fees. I don't know. Maybe they do things to stop the bleeding. I'm not quite sure. I don't know exactly what to expect, but ultimately, if we did get a 60% drop here, we would be somewhere around 25,000 before we started to move back up uh and and ultimately we we could i could see us trending up something to this effect before we got to the having maybe we go to the having around thirty five thousand, and then away we go and we're up only pretty much from there minus a regular stream of 20 percent um 20 to 30 percent recoils if you will in in bitcoin's price action so that that's basically what we're looking at right now and i i mean i've already accumulated and um you know, there may be an opportunity, maybe if things get so low, maybe if we see a 25 cent Cardano that maybe I throw a little extra side money into it just to average my position down even further, uh, knowing that it's probably not going to be that long before I'm able to basically take some of those profits if I so chose. Uh, <clears throat> But ultimately, that's what we're looking at in Bitcoin's price action and, and um, uh, potential leading into the halving. I mean, we're not that far from the halving right now, folks. We're basically uh, we are currently at around 88 days from the halving. So, yeah, keep that in mind as you're uh, basically investing. I'm currently in a couple shorts that are playing out right now. And, and you know, maybe we do trend sideways for a week. Uh, and then we start to really start, we, we start coming down. That's basically what happened, uh, previously. Um, you know, and I'll even show you real quick, uh, looking at trading view here, we started the descent 
and we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then we started to get an indecision candle at fifteen days. So about fifteen days into that pump, we had dropped down about twenty percent. That's about what we've been seeing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then maybe 14, 15, and we conclude that original, uh, that full 20% drop. So, I mean, this is matching up pretty daggone close. And I'm not saying that it has to be identical this time around, but we've definitely seen price momentum like this. From that pers from that point, we went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, 11, 12, 13 days before we get this big white candle to the downside, followed up by another wick low. Uh, so, you know, let's just keep our eyes open and hope for the best. But ultimately, if we get a significant correction here as GBT starts selling out, here's what's happening, though, too. And the other side of this is a lot of these other funds are going to be buying it up. And I still to this day just do not understand why they didn't just do some form of over the counter transaction. I don't know if it's a regulatory requirement that makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know. I don't know what the cause for that is. Why are they dumping on the market? Um, and at the same time, they could very well have some kind of, I don't know what kind of deals are taking place behind closed doors or or what's legal, what's not. I have no idea. They may say, you know what? Hey, GPTC, we're going to be buying up all your volume um, at a discount, and uh, we'd prefer you just go ahead and did that over the broker or over the exchanges to drive these prices down for us. Because honestly, you know, that probably is why. Who's willing to buy something over the counter? You know, you can get much cheaper if they're forced to use the exchanges instead. So, and with that kind of volume, you're not going to find many over-the-counter dealers uh, with willing to do that kind of consistent uh, deal. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense for these these um, spot Bitcoin ETFs to just buy them off the exchanges as they're dumping the price down. So there you have it, folks. Until next time, guys, thanks for joining me, Crow Your Coins. And I will also tell you real quick, there's some big news coming for the Crow Trader bot. I'm testing some stuff right now. I'm let's just say I'm having fun with Chat GPT writing Pine scripts for TradingView, and um, there's going to be some pretty big updates coming. So, and the website is is being redone right now, and and I'll have some pretty cool screenshots and some stuff to show you. Hopefully, uh, well, it'll probably be next week because I am going to be going to the Karate Combat Private Event uh, coming up. So, uh, but till next time, guys, crow your coins. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you soon.